Today, we are going to go over every Godzilla-related Funko Pop to date. And there just might be a few you didn't know about. But first, let's pay the bills. Before we dive into this video, I need to talk to you about one of my sponsors, Bespoke Post. They're a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. I've said before that it's free to join, you can skip a month, and you can cancel any time. What happens is you take a preference quiz on their website, and every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. You can preview boxes before they're shipped out so you can decide then if you want to keep it, swap it, or just skip the month and get charged nothing. So Bespoke Post wanted me to pick some items from their website to showcase, and I was like, fine, send me a knife. So here's the forged steel knife with its leather sheath. It's a wonderful all-purpose knife with 256 layer high carbon Damascus steel. And now I can finally get those garden fairies who have been living in this tree and filling my property with their dumb magic. Hello? Come out, little garden fairies, hello! Then I saw that Bespoke Post actually ships oysters to the eastern US, and I asked for that, thinking there's no way they're sending me oysters. They sent me oysters! Harvested literally the day before I got them in North Point, Virginia, along with a shucking knife and Ray Clay hot sauce, and viewer, I ate those oysters. I ate every one. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, just click the link in this video's description and enter MONSTER at checkout. Or go to bespokepost.com slash monster. Thank you Bespoke Post for supporting the channel and helping me with the pest control. Flight time! Yay! Funko Pops are just a fad. They'll be gone soon. Is a thing I said, like, a decade ago. Yeah, these things aren't going anywhere. In the last 10 plus years, I've seen Funko Pops take over comic book stores, video game stores. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw some Funko Pops in a subway at this point. Funko is a toy company founded in 1998. Their most successful line are Funko Pops vinyl figures. Characters with big ol' squarish heads and little bitty bodies, and usually circular black eyes. These figures usually depict licensed characters. The first Funko Pops were DC superheroes released in 2010. And in the 13 years since, every character, real or fictional, that's ever existed has had a Funko Pop. At this point, there are over 8,000 different Funko Pops. Are you even famous at all if you don't have a Funko Pop? The first Godzilla Funko Pop was released in 2015. He's numbered 239, and there are six different variations of him, starting with the standard version here. 239 Godzilla is six inches tall, which is big for a Funko Pop. They average about four inches, four inches and change. Here's a size comparison. Officially, this Godzilla is considered a supersized pop. He looks like your very basic Godzilla template. I wouldn't say he's based on any specific Godzilla, although his release is likely related to the premiere of the legendary Godzilla film the year before. He's a really good pop. I like this mold a lot. Although mine's got something rattling around in him. Let's talk about the variants and where they were offered. First up is this one from Entertainment Earth PX Previews, called Godzilla Atomic Breath Glow in the Dark. He's also number 239, all of these variants will be. He's got a darker skin color with glow in the dark eyes, teeth, nails, and dorsal plates. Let's check out that effect. It's okay, I wouldn't say it's lighting up the room or anything. This is the black and white variant that was available at the 2015 New York Comic Con, as well as Toy Tokyo, a shop in New York City. It's the 239 mold in a grayscale with black eyes. And this one is very easy to confuse with this one. Godzilla black and white with a purple back. This one's in a grayscale with white eyes, and as the name implies, he's got a purple back. And this one was an exclusive from Books A Million. Here are the two black and white Godzillas side by side. Like I said, very easy to confuse. Here's another variant that was at the 2015 New York Comic Con and Toy Tokyo shop, Godzilla Ghost Glow in the Dark. And this one offers a lot more glowing action than the PX Previews variant. Last up is my personal favorite, 
Godzilla Burning, a variation that looks like Burning Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Destoroya. He's an exclusive from GTS, and you can see he's rocking the jet black skin with orange eyes and dorsal plates and the orange flames. I wouldn't have minded some red, the black and orange make me think this is a Halloween themed Godzilla, but I still love this one. And here's your overview of the six Godzilla 239 Funko Pops. Let me know what you think of these and if you have any. It's worth mentioning this King Kong Pop released in 2016 and numbered 388. He's holding a helicopter and he's more traditionally scaled, so he's smaller than the Godzillas I showed you, as it should be. What's interesting here is that the pop was made for Kong Skull Island, but the first release labels him as King Kong, the name never used in the movie. Later releases of this pop relabel him as just Kong. I feel like I should also mention King Homer a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror-inspired pop from 2019, designated number 822. It's a traditional black and white King Kong motif, with King Homer in shackles and even holding a little Marge pop. Is it weird that I like this mold more than the Kong Skull Island one? There was a Treehouse of Horror parody of Godzilla as well, and so we have a Homerzilla Funko Pop. Although, as of this video, he's on pre-order and not out yet. There's not even a physical picture of him yet I could find, just this computer render. But you can see he's also in black and white, and perfect if you want to have a... Homer versus Homer fight. Seriously, I, I wish they made Bartzilla instead. There's also the Funko Godzilla Mystery Minis Godzilla 3-pack, which I'm not gonna go over today because it's not pop, and I'm only bringing it up because look at this hilarious Photoshop job you'll see on some sites selling them. Hey, we haven't done a Playtime Trivia question in a while. For you tokusatsu lovers out there, you should know that Ultraman also had a line of Funko Pops. Which one of these Ultraman characters below does not have a Funko Pop? Is it A, Ultraman Ace, B, Alien Balton, C, Ultraman Jack, or D, Ultra 7? The answer in just a moment. Okay, the question was, which one of these Ultraman characters does not have a Funko Pop? As of this video, anyway. And that answer, surprisingly, is D, Ultra 7. But here's a look at the other Ultraman Funko Pops that are available as of this video. Now let's go to the year 2021, when the film Godzilla vs. Kong was finally released after some delays. And these delays also affected the release of the related Funko Pops that were directly tied to the movie but they eventually came out, and there are plenty to go over. Starting with regular old Godzilla, numbered 1017. We're back to regular 4-inch and change pop scale now, and this Godzilla is clearly based on the legendary Godzilla as seen in the movie. The details and texture on this are more intense than I expect from a Funko Pop. In fact, in general, I will tell you I'm not a Funko Pop guy. But I really like this mold. It's certainly more lizardy than the 239 Godzilla, and the standard pop proportions stop this from being a full-blown likeness of the legendary Godzilla. But I almost think the pop proportions improve this character design. Gone is the tiny head on the dad bod with the elephant feet from the movies. This actually feels closer to a traditional Godzilla in my opinion. Or at least a compromise of legendary Godzilla and traditional Godzilla. If you like the details on 1017, you're gonna love 1015, which is the 10-inch jumbo-sized Godzilla. This is the biggest commercial Godzilla pop yet, and it's not like they just blew up the 1017 mold. This one's turned the other direction, and he's got his mouth open. Like he's smiling like he did in the movie. Again, I'm not a pop guy, but this pop is awesome. It might actually be my favorite piece of Godzilla merch to come out of Godzilla vs. Kong. Here are some size comparisons with the standard 1017 and even the 239, which now feels tiny in comparison. There is a Walmart exclusive of this 10-inch Godzilla, also numbered 1015, and that is the Neon City Godzilla. This has lights reflecting off of the old Big G to evoke the movie's third act fight in Hong Kong. Obviously, they ramped up the blues, giving it a bit of an icy cold vibe. This is just my favorite pop mold ever made. 
Number 1018 is Heat Ray Godzilla. It's Godzilla with blue eyes and a blue mouth, and an added atomic breath effect you can put in his mouth to make him blasting someone. Or you could pretend he's blasting a hole into Hollow Earth like he did in the movie. This one has a glow-in-the-dark variant that was exclusive to FYE, where all the blue bits can glow, including the atomic breath. When it's not in glow mode, it looks nearly identical to the standard version. And then one more Godzilla is 1316, another FYE exclusive, and another variant, the glow-in-the-dark burning Godzilla. This guy came late to the party, being released way after the other toys in December 2022. And even though it's a Godzilla vs. Kong pop, Godzilla is taking his burning form that we saw at the end of the previous film, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now, this appears to be the exact same mold as the 1017 Godzilla, yet it's designated a new number. So, I really don't know how this whole Funko Pop numbering system works. But check out how this guy glows in the dark. It's super vibrant, especially in the first minute or so when the light goes off. It looks like it's under a black light. It looks like a jack-o'-lantern cutout. I really like the glow effect on this guy. Moving over to Kong, he also has a jumbo-sized 10-inch mold we could look at, numbered 1016. He's looking quite angry. Unlike Godzilla, he's got some articulation in the neck. I like this mold, but the big black eyes give him somewhat of an alien-esque look in my opinion. Here he is next to Jumbo Godzilla, ready to throw down. That ass. Kong also got a Walmart exclusive Neon City Light variant in 10 inch scale, and he is purple as f. Out of context, he looks kinda like Hanna Barbera's Great Grape Ape. Back to regular scales. Here's Battle Ready Kong, numbered 1020. His eyes are orange, which I prefer to the black eyes for Pop Kong, and you can see he's thumping his chest and ready for. well, battle, I guess. Neck articulation will be present on all of these Kongs, including 1021, Kong with Battle Axe! Now he's cool as a cucumber, holding his weapon from the movie, with the Godzilla dorsal plate shoved through a bone. This one has an interesting variant that was exclusive to Books A Million, a flocked version. But I've also seen this say it was exclusive to Barnes & Noble. But if you ever want to pet a fuzzy wuzzy Kong, this is the version for you. Here he is next to his standard counterpart. And last, we have Kong 1022, Battle Scarred Kong. He's holding a piece of a crane and he's all mad because Godzilla played tic-tac-toe right on his chest. He's got scars on his nose, his old scratches, his new scratches. This monkey is just a scratching post. Interesting how this one has black eyes while the others have orange. On to the movie's third act surprise, Mecha Godzilla. He's numbered 1019 and I don't love it. I, I don't know, I just don't think this Mega Godzilla lends well to pop proportions. He's kind of in a weird pose, too. Like, I like the Mega Godzilla design from the movie, it's grown on me a lot, actually. I'm just not in love with this particular pop. But it does have a glow in a dark variant that was a Funko Pop Store exclusive. The mold looks the same, but he's designated a new number, 1076. Books A Million offered this exclusive two-pack of Godzilla and Kong, specifically the 1017 Godzilla and 1020 Kong. I picked this up because, well, it didn't feel like there was a lot of merch out there that had Godzilla and Kong together. Aside from this children's book I already covered, they always felt weirdly separated to me. Hell, even in the movie, they each have their own separate supporting casts who barely interact with each other. So, I really like this 2-pack for the simple fact that it has Godzilla and Kong in one box together. Books A Million also had a 3-pack that included Mechagodzilla, and also a different Godzilla and Kong. The 1018 Heat Ray Godzilla, and the 1021 Kong with Battle Axe. So you can get both the 2-pack and the 3-pack and not have any repeat molds, which is cool. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention these Funko Pop keychains, including a mini Godzilla who resembles the 1015 jumbo-sized Godzilla mold, and this Kong who resembles the 1021 Kong with Battle Axe. Officially, these are called Pocket Pop keychains, and they don't receive designated numbers like the Funko Pop's line proper. But here are some size comparisons. Godzilla and Kong came in many scales. 
Also outside of the official Pops line was this Funko Soda Godzilla figure, a Godzilla who is packaged in a soda can, and there's a glow-in-the-dark chase variant that resembles the Walmart-exclusive 1015 Neon City Godzilla in color. Here's the Kong version, and instead of the Neon City chase, his chase variant is a flocked version. That's really interesting. But again, today's video was meant to focus on the Godzilla and Kong Pops, and that's all of them as in the making of this video. But I'm sure more will come one day. Like today, because shortly after I recorded the voiceover for this video, Entertainment Earth began taking pre-orders for this Godzilla Blacklight Pop. And what's interesting to me is how it appears to be the 1017 mold, but has been renumbered as 1348. Huh. Entertainment Earth has also announced an exclusive Blacklight Mothra Pop. That's right, the Queen of the Monsters has entered the chat. Now unlike the Godzilla Blacklight Pop, this one is not listed as a Godzilla vs. Kong Pop, but just under the Godzilla banner. Even though this appears to me to be Legendary Mothra. Either way, it's nice to see this Godzilla logo again. I have to believe they'll eventually announce the release of a standard color Mothra Pop, probably the day after I publish this video. The granddaddy of all Funko Godzillas is this giant one on display at the Funko headquarters in Everett, Washington. He doesn't exactly resemble any of the regular Godzilla molds. Actually, he looks like a giant version of the Godzilla that was part of the Funko Mystery Minis Science Fiction Series 2 line. But anyways, again, let me know which of these Funko Pops you have, which ones you like. Do you love this Jumbo Godzilla as much as I do? Let me know in the comments. If you're collecting all of these Pops, I hope this video is useful. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time.